Let's talk about perspective in photography. Understanding perspective in photography will help you to create compelling compositions and allow you to use artistic effects effectively. Let's start by defining perspective. In photography, perspective is the spatial relationship between objects in your image. Perspective is changed by moving closer to or farther away from your subject. Focal length does not affect perspective, so let's start there. In these two images, we can see the effects a focal length on perspective. There are none. In the first image, we have a 28 millimeter shot, and then we have a 42 millimeter so shot for the second image. I cropped in the 28 millimeter shot so that it has the same amount of area as the 42 millimeter shot. This crop shows that there is no difference in perspective at different focal lengths. Focal length does not affect perspective. It is only magnification. There is one difference between these images, and that's depth of field. In the 42 millimeter image, there is a shallower depth of field. This is an effect of having a longer focal length. Now let's talk about moving closer to or farther away from your subject. These next images demonstrate. These three images show the effects of moving closer to or farther away from your subject. You'll notice in these images that the subject is the same size even though I use different focal lengths. I achieve this by moving farther away for the more magnified, higher focal lengths. Let's see what effects this had. So on the 28 millimeter shot, you can tell that you see lots of foreground, lots of background. You can see a lot of the image, there's lots of depth. This is because I was very close to the subject. It does not have to do with the magnification. If I cropped the image at 28 millimeters, from the distance that I took the 84 millimeter shot at, it would look the same. All I did was move closer and farther away to change the perspective. The magnification just allowed me to keep the coffee cup the same size. So the 50 millimeter shot, we can see that we've lost some of the foreground and some of the background, and there's a lot less depth. And there is a shallower depth of field. This happens at higher focal lengths not an effect of perspective. And finally, at 84 millimeters, we're much farther away than the initial 28 millimeter shot. And we can see that there's much less foreground, much less background, and the image feels more compressed. It's flatter. Also notice that as I got farther away from the subject, more of the image appears to be of the subject. Perspective can also be changed by moving up or down. Let's check that out. So in these images, we see the effects on perspective of moving the camera vertically up or down. So in the first image, we're at a normal standing height looking at a sidewalk. And then in the second image, I've brought it down to ground level and I've taken the same shot. There are a number of things that happened here. The things that occur when you move closer to the ground can be categorized into five different areas. Number one, more of your image will appear to be above the horizon. So you can tell that there's a line going through the middle of both of these image, but as you get closer to the ground, more of the image appears to be above the horizon. The same amount of space is taken up by the foreground, but in the first image, there looks to be a lot more space in the foreground than above the horizon. Which brings us to point number two. Objects closer to you will appear to take up more of the image. We can see this in number two, the sidewalk, takes up almost a third of the image, takes up a lot of the image, whereas it takes up much less in the image where I'm higher up vertically. Which brings us to number three, spatial context below the horizon will be lost. So it's more difficult to tell how far away things are in the second image than in the first, because this is a normal point of view, we can tell spatially where things are. But in the second image, you're kind of at an ant's perspective and it's difficult to tell how far away things are and where they are in relation to other objects. So number four, more objects slash more of objects will appear to be above the horizon line as you get closer to the ground. So in the second image, you can tell that the objects in the first image kind of got higher, take up more of the area above the horizon line, which brings us to number five, 
subjects slash objects will appear taller as you get closer to the ground. This kind of makes sense, but it's good to lay it out there. And you can plainly see it in the difference between image one and two. Next, let's talk about point perspective. This is a concept primarily from drawing and painting, and it has to do with where lines converge to create depth in paintings and drawings primarily, but also in photography. So these images are an example of zero point perspective. Why is it zero point? Because there is no vanishing point. The point perspective, 1.2.3 point, 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 has to do with the number of vanishing points in your image, which is where lines converge in the image. So if there is no place where lines converge, all lines are parallel in your image, you have a zero point perspective image. Now there can still be depth in a zero point perspective image, as you can see here, especially in landscapes. Where does this depth come from if there are no vanishing points in the image to draw your eye into the image? Haze for one, in landscapes especially. Also planes, the number of areas that catch your eye in the image. So as we can see in this image, there's the plane of the grass, then the trees, the lake, the mountains, and then the faraway mountains, as well as the sky. So the more planes you have in the image, the more depth there will be. So there are many ways that zero point images can still have depth. Now let's go to one point perspective images. An image has one point perspective when all the lines in the image converge on a single point. So as we can see here, the lines in the road and the sidewalk converge on a single point, one vanishing point, one point perspective. Another thing that happens in one point perspective images is all shapes have their true shape. So the trees look the way they normally do. Nothing looks distorted. Every shape has its true shape. Additionally, the vertical location of the vanishing point is determined by the eye level of the photographer. So if you move vertically up or down, tilting your lens, this will change where the vanishing point is in your image. Now let's move on to two point perspective images. This image is an example of two point perspective, meaning there are two vanishing points. One with these horizontal lines converging over here, and one with these horizontal lines converging over here. Like in one point perspective, two point perspective shots, vanishing points vertical height is determined by the eye level and tilt of the photographer's lens. Tilt up, the vanishing point will be lower, and you tilt down, the vanishing point will be higher. In two point perspective, shapes do not have their true shape. They will look elongated and somewhat odd. As you can tell here, in real life, this is a complete rectangle, but it gets smaller towards one end. This is how we see in real life as well when seeing in two-point perspective. In two-point perspective, vertical lines should still be parallel. As you can see in this image, they are. These three lines that are vertical do not converge at the top. They remain parallel. They will never, never converge no matter how high you take up the lines in this image. It's easy to mess up two-point perspective shots by tilting your lens up, and that will bring you into three-point perspective, which looks odd. Let's look at that. So here's an example of a three-point perspective image. How is it a three-point perspective image? We have three vanishing points. One along this, one along these, and now these vertical lines also converge, making it three-point perspective. This is achieved by tilting your lens up. As you can tell, three-point perspective does not look good. It looks very odd and distorted, but can be used in some circumstances for artistic effect. That's about it for perspective in photography. Remember that trying out different perspectives will lead you to fun and interesting compositional choices and artistic effects that you may not normally see. Get out of the mindset of taking pictures from wherever your face currently is, move around, try moving your camera down, up, tilting it, taking it from a one-point perspective, a two-point perspective, or even in some circumstances, a three-point perspective. There are lots of fun things you can do with perspective. Thanks for watching.